everyone, my name is Gwen and today we are talking about Loki the Trickster. Loki first entered pop culture through the introduction of Loki Lawfison, son of Lofi, frost giant of Jotunheim. Loki is a character created by Marvel Comics and first appears in Venus issue 6 and of course is portrayed by the very handsome Tom Hiddleston. Who is a Tom fan? I am a Tom fan. Loki further seeds himself into pop culture by appearing in the 2018 God of War game, which if you haven't played yet, here's your spoiler warning in 3, 2, as the son of Kratos. What? So with Loki's heavy influence on pop culture, let's take a look into his history and find out what makes him such an iconic character that shows up across all of our favorite franchises. Today, we will be looking at the differences between Norse god Loki and pop culture Loki, making the already confusing Norse mythology even more confusing. So let's jump right into it. But before we continue, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if you like the content that we're doing. Also, let us know if there's any supernatural sort of stuff that you want us to talk about and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Go do it. Go do it right now. So let's start at Loki's origins. The origins of Loki is as complicated as it comes. Due to the success of the MCU, most of us know Loki as the son of Lofi, a frost giant who abandoned Loki because he was born small and tiny and a little bit weird and a little bit different. Odin then takes Loki in after he defeats the frost giants. However, that is very far from the original myth the story tells that Loki's father was the giant Farbadi and his mother was named Lofi. Lofi was a goddess that was accepted by the Aesir. So this might be the reason why Loki was given the chance to be part of the pantheon of Norse gods. As we all know, Loki is the trickster god. So he could change form, he could change gender, and he was never fully good or evil. So what was his main purpose? His main purpose was to basically create trouble and create chaos and basically disrupt the order of the gods. Come on. What did you expect? Contrary to the MCU, Loki is actually said to be Odin's adopted brother instead of adopted son. Some scholars even argue that since Loki and Odin go way back, that Loki is actually Loder, the god that created mankind alongside Odin, and the name Loki was later reassigned to him. What? Don't look at me, I'm just as confused as you are at this point. While Loki is said to be handsome and have fair skin, he was also said to be evil and cunning. He's fickle and he loves to cheat and deceive his fellow Acers and sometimes get them into like a lot of trouble, like life-threatening trouble. So come on Loki, what are you doing? <laughs> this may be the reason why there is like zero evidence of worship towards Loki, the trickster god, because I guess he doesn't possess any traits that other people want. That and alongside like many other facts like he's the reason for Ragnarok. Sorry, got a little bit carried away right there, but let's talk about that because it's important. So Loki being the god that he is bore many offsprings. The first two, Valley and Narfi, which is not really our focus today. Our focus is on his next three offsprings. Loki and the female giant Angerboda conceived three children. Jomungandr, the world serpent that is destined to fight Thor. Fenrir, the wolf prophesied to take the life of the Allfather, and Hel, the goddess of death. So as you can see, these three offsprings of Loki's were actually the cause of death of the Acers during Ragnarok. No, the other Ragnarok. No, the real Ragnarok. And that's probably why Loki isn't loved or worshipped by the Norsemen or women. But we'll come back and talk about Ragnarok a little bit later. Loki also possessed various abilities, including the one that we all know, shapeshifting. He was a master shapeshifter who could transform into many forms. He has transformed into beings such as a salmon, a mare, a fly, and was also able to change his sex. That's how he gave birth to Odin's horse Sleipnir. 
Loki is also a master tactician and can get what he wants with his intelligence. He can also determine the best course of action and this helps him escape from many of his otherwise ill-fated adventures. And like every other god, supernatural strength and immortality. Although Loki is neither fully good nor evil, there are incidents that made Loki a villain and I'm not talking about the first Avengers movie, I'm talking about the murder of Baldur. One of Loki's darker stories revolve around the murder of Baldur, who was said to be the most handsome of the Aesirs that ever lived. Baldur had a dream that prophesied his death and therefore his mother Frigg went around the cosmos and gained the promise of everything in the Nine Realms to never harm Baldur. Everything and everyone from fire, water, earth, air, creatures, and being. Everything except for the one being that Frigg thought to be harmless. Everyone was celebrating Baldur's invincibility. Nothing could harm him, not even Thor's mighty Mjolnir. Or like I like to call it, Jonathan! Loki was not pleased. He was jealous of Baldur, so he wanted to play a trick on him. Loki knew that Baldur had to have a weakness. Thus, Loki disguised as an old woman and went to ask Frigg about Baldur. Frigg explained about the promises she'd gained from the Nine Realms, and Loki kept prying and prying until she finally revealed that there was one being she hadn't asked because she thought it was harmless. Mistletoe. Loki, overjoyed, grabbed a branch of mistletoe and deceived Baldur's blind brother, Hod, to shoot the branch at Baldur, and the branch actually penetrated Baldur in the chest and he died instantly. The Aesir was furious and demanded Loki's head. Loki had no choice but to run as far away from Asgard as he possibly could. Loki found sanctuary at the peak of a high mountain, but it was short-lived. Odin had seen where Loki was hiding and sent his army to capture him. And when they arrived, Loki turned himself into a salmon, leaped up the river, and escaped. In true Loki fashion. <laughs> However, Loki's escape did not last very long and he was eventually caught and imprisoned. They actually bound him to three stones and put a venomous serpent on top of him so that it would drip venom onto his face, causing him to scream in agony. I do not want that to ever happen to me. So Loki actually managed to escape from imprisonment and the now furious Loki wanted vengeance against Asgard. This is where the Norse mythology actually differs from the stories in the Marvel comics and the MCU. We will be comparing it to the movie Thor Ragnarok. My favorite one. It is said that the death of Baldur was the beginning of Ragnarok, whereas in the movie, Ragnarok was triggered after the death of Odin. But in both versions, Loki was the cause of both Baldur and Odin's death. Another difference is that when Ragnarok starts in the myth, all the chains that hold the monsters of the world would be broken. This allowed Loki to lead the charge along with an army of giants and monsters to destroy Asgard. But in the movie, after Odin's death, Hela is released from prison and then she leads an army of the undead along with her pet wolf, Fenris. Another difference that Marvel did quite a good spin on is that in the myth, Loki was steering the ship that led the attack on Vigrid. But in the movie, we see Loki as the savior with a spaceship coming in to save the remaining Asgardians. Surtur's role in both Ragnaroks did not change. He still ended up setting everything aflame after the battle and ending the world. However, in the myth, Loki wasn't the one who summoned Surtur, and they had nothing to do with each other. In the myth, there's a part where Thor did not escape nor enjoy new Asgard. He died fighting the world serpent, either from his wounds, exhaustion, or poison. Odin died according to the prophecy told in his dream, being swallowed by Fenrir. In the book Prose Edda, which most of our research is from, Gilfaganing chapter 51 reads, But the saddest and most anticlimactic ending of all stories befell upon Loki. Loki fights Heimdalla and the two kill each other. And that is actually the end of our video. Have you seen the new trailer for Thor Love and Thunder? Because I have an Oh my god, it is so great! That's actually the reason why we came back and revisited Loki because now that Loki is, you know, back in the Disney Plus series, 
Will we see him in Thor Love and Thunder? Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Have you caught up with all of our latest videos? If not, click here if you want to watch more Marvel stuff and click here if you want to watch more Southeast Asian myths and horror stories. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all of our latest videos. And a gentle reminder, don't look at the demon. Till next time, I'm Gwen. Bye!